Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and if you're new here, hello. If you're not new here, welcome back. So, I just got off work not too long ago, but I just wanted to sit down and film a story time because I've never done a story time, and I want to tell this story because it's probably the worst day of my whole life. So, grab popcorn, grab some LaCroix, grab something because it's probably going to be a really long story because it was a really long day so let's just get right into my story so this happened my freshman year of high school so it was may 20th so it was almost the end of the year everyone had yearbooks i think it was yearbook signing day actually um, and if you're not familiar, I live in Oklahoma, so Oklahoma is a crazy weather state. Crazy weather. One day it's hot, one day it's cold, it's rainy for 10 minutes, and all of a sudden it's sunny and 100 degrees, and then snow the next hour. Like, our weather's just unpredictable, and we can never really figure out what's going on. So, if you live in Oklahoma... You know that April and May is like our rainy season, tornado season, you know where this is going. So, May 20th was the day. It was any normal day. I had just bought this new dress. I actually still have it, and if I can find it, I'll insert it. Um, it was like a little Forever 21 dress. It has ice cream cones all over it. I was feeling so cute. I had just got my yearbook. I was so excited. Um, so it gets to the last period of the day, which was our sixth period, and probably 10 minutes before the bell rings, like, not long at all, 10, 15 minutes before we're going to be dismissed, um, the principal goes over the speaker and is like, hey, there's some tornadic activity, there's like some storms, so we're going to keep you a little bit longer after the bell. So just stay in your sixth period um, and just wait it out and then we'll come back over the intercom and dismiss you when it's time to go. So we were like, okay, so annoying. So the time to be dismissed goes by. So we get dismissed at 3.11. So 3.11 had already gone, she had gone by. So probably 10 minutes later, like when they were, about to let us um, leave. I come back over at the intercom. And so I'm like, yes, I'm gonna get to go home. I'm so excited. And they say, no one is going home. This is severe weather. We're taking shelter in our storm shelter procedure areas. So in my high school is not a very <laughs> nice high school. Love it, <laughs> you know, but not very nice. So they, we don't have storm shelters. I don't know why. So we all just go to um, a classroom on the base floor that's not um, by windows or not like an exterior wall because if you know anything about tornadoes, you always wanna go to the innermost part of your house or the innermost part of anywhere. Um, that's the safest place. So I was on the top floor, so they made me go down a floor and then we went into this like little room like right next to stairs, I felt like Harry Potter. So we went in there and there was about three other classes hanging out in there with us. So um, they pushed all the desks to the wall and we all just sat on the floor like in the middle together. Um, we had helmets, but I didn't think we have that. We did not have helmets that year. So you had textbooks if you needed to protect your head. The school is way safer now after this whole experience. So we were in this room. I really didn't think anything of it. I have have lived in Oklahoma almost my entire life. I've gone through so many tornado seasons that like, you never really think anything of it. Um, you just get so used to it and you just get so used to it all the time that it's just like, oh, it's, it's gonna pass. We're gonna be released and probably, you know, 30 minutes, I'm gonna get to go home, get some pizza rolls, it's gonna be fine. So we're chilling, um, 
the teacher's classroom that we all like invaded she had put um the weather forecast news um on her like smart board so that we could kind of watch it and i remember specifically my phone only having about 20 percent because it was the end of the day so i go to plug my phone in to charge it because i was like i don't know how long they're gonna keep us here so I charge it literally for 15 minutes, like not long at all. And the power completely goes out of the whole school. Like the power dies. So everyone's freaking screaming and freaking out. And I'm still not freaking out because power outages are normal as well. Like my power will go out in a thunderstorm. So I was like, these people are overreacting for nothing. Like what is wrong with y'all? Like it's a thunderstorm. So... The power goes out so a girl close to me on her phone she has like full battery i don't know how she is kind of giving us updates about what's happening now at this point is when i kind of start to realize that it may be more serious than i thought it was <coughs> oh my god so she's like there's definitely tornadic activity there's a tornado on the ground um but in Oklahoma, tornadoes touch on all the time. They may be just F winds. And so they lift up a load of debris, but, and then they only are on the ground for a minute. Um, so as I was thinking, I was like, it's probably just a small one, like going to be on the ground for a minute and we're going to be released soon. Um, and then like an hour goes by and I'm still trapped here. And the girl's like, it's serious. Like, um, I remember her just being like, it's an F5 tornado. And I was like, oh my god. Like, okay, that's really freaking scary. Like, it's an F5 tornado. But, again, not thinking anything of it. Because I've seen F5 tornadoes and never had any problems. So, it's one of those that's like, if it doesn't happen to you, it doesn't happen. Which is false. So... She starts saying that it's over by the Warren Theater, and then I was like, well, dang, <laughs> I live by the Warren Theater. Hopefully that ain't my house that's getting blown away. So I had a friend in the class. She starts bawling because her dad lives pretty close by, and he works nights, so he sleeps through the day. So she's trying to contact him because she's scared that he's going to be in his house, and it's going to hit his house, and he's going to have no idea. But the... Tornado sirens have been going off for two hours at this point, probably. I don't even know. Um, so she's calling her, like, her dad, and everyone's freaking out. So then I'm freaking out because <laughs> I have two little sisters in different schools. I have a mom who works close by. All my family is close by, and so I'm like, oh, I have sisters that are in school. Like, I don't know if they're okay. I don't know if my mom's okay. Um, and I'm not getting any service because <laughs> all the cell towers are knocked down, but I didn't know that. So <laughs> I remember texting my mom and just saying like, I love you like so much. Pretty much like that was literally it because my phone's about to die. So I remember just texting her like, I love you so much. And it like, it would be the only message I delivered before my phone died. <laughs> really scary. And the scariest part about all of that is when my mom actually got that text message, the radio station that my mom was listening to at the time had did like an alert that the um, tornado that was on the ground was in a direct path to slam into my high school. So she probably was like, damn, <laughs> my daughter's about to die. And her last text that she sent me is that she loved me. Um, obviously I'm okay. Obviously my mom's okay. My sisters are okay. I just want to get that out there. We're all okay. So, I text her that my phone dies. So, probably five minutes later, we can hear the tornado. Because tornadoes sound like kind of like a train. Like, really just like loud. Like, uh, like coming by. So, we heard that by my school because um, it struck a nearby middle school. But no one, I think, was injured. It was like, they just like hit the gym, but none of the kids were in the gym. So that's good because um, the middle schools get out the earliest. So they had already been released, I think, because my little sister was in middle school and she had already been released. 
Um, he did hit a couple elementary schools and actually did kill some kids. So, so that's really freaking sad and I hate talking about it. So, yay. So we could hear it. Everyone's crying and screaming and the lights are off and the teacher's trying to calm everyone down. But you've got like 60 freshmen in one room. Like everyone was freaking out. So finally... They are like, okay, the storm has passed. We're, we are all like herded out into the hallways and they make us like line up sitting down along the lockers until they figure out what they're gonna like do. So we sit there for probably 15 minutes and then the principals and everyone comes by and is like, okay, parents are here to pick you up. So we're gonna move you all into the cafeteria and you're just gonna sit at tables and your parents gonna come up and with a microphone just say your name. When they call your name, you're free to go. Um, all you have to do is just sign off. Like there'll be a person that will be there to sign you out. And so we were like, cool. I guess it was like their way of make, like knowing who'd been checked out and like who was still trapped at the school because kids actually got trapped at the school and had to be bused to a local church until their parents could come get them. So I was just chilling and like, yes, it was scary. Yes, but like you never like think it's you. Like you never think it's gonna be your house that gets blown away. But um, it was mine, <laughs> but I didn't know. So I sit there, my mom calls my name. I go up to her, they let me go. I'm like, oh, mom, thank God you're here. I'm so hungry, let's go home. I've had the freaking longest day because it's like seven o'clock at night now. She's like, Regan. We can't go home and I was like why she's like we don't have a home like our house was blown away and I was like girl stop playing with me like it's not blown away like my house is not blown away and she was like Reagan I'm telling you it's blown away so I'm like letting the news hit me and then we like open the doors to like so I can go outside and when I tell you, it looked like a war zone out there, like, places that I had gone through all, like, gone to all my life, just destroyed. Trees everywhere, like, it was, like, the saddest thing I'd ever seen in my whole life. And I was like, oh my god. <coughs> Sorry. So, I get in the car, and my, um, little sister's in the car, and she's like, hey... I was like, hey, I heard about the house. And she's like, yeah, it got blown away. And I don't think it like had hit any of us really yet. So we were all just kind of like, okay. So my baby sister went to school quite a bit away. So she was not in the path at all. So my grandparents had already picked her up. So she was at my grandparents' house. So we called my grandparents and we we're like, we're on our way to come get Avery just let her know what happened like so I guess they told Avery so whenever we get there my little sister is crying and she's so upset so like it was crazy like my cat was in like the floorboard of the car and like none of us had anything like I had the dress on my back and my shoes and like that was it like like all of us just literally just had the clothes on our backs and we lost everything um, so we went to stay with my grandparents, um, that live a couple towns over. So we stayed with them, um, for like a month. But, um, I think two days after the tornado is when we were allowed to come back to the house. Um, just to see the damage and see if we could salvage anything and then contact insurance or whatever we needed to contact, um, and then contact like demolition people to like pretty much scoop your house up so that was probably like the hardest day is like going back and like seeing the house and like the only few things that was standing like I knew was my house because it had like my pink bedroom wall sorry my sister interrupted me but I just saw like my pink bedroom wall just standing there with none of the rest of my room attached. And it's like an eerie feeling like to this day like still gives me chills because like 
like when you see your house and your belongings just like shredded and like you have no say in it it's like really hard um and this like walking back through like what was left standing of my house is really sad and like the funny thing is like how some things were destroyed and others weren't so like all of the rooms were like completely ripped off the house but um where our kitchen was but was no longer there there was still like a countertop like part of our countertop was still there um and my mom had drank coffee that morning and she had left a white mug sitting on the countertop and the mug was still <laughs> sitting on the countertop but like everything else was ripped out and like where our kitchen sink was was ripped out of the like out of the just ripped out um but all of the stuff that was like below that cabinet like all of our cleaning supplies was all still there which was really weird um so when I we went there we did find a couple things that could be salvaged um like in my bedroom I had this like little small closet kind of thing that just had like little shelves I don't really know what it was for and I put all like my knickknacks in there and like magazines and just kind of like storage and my dad actually gave me a snow globe for like my fifth birthday that I've like treasured my whole life it's like a snow white one which is funny because that's what I look like right now but um and I remember like me and my mom and my sisters were talking we like if we could go back like what's one item that you would like save and that's like the item I said I would save um and my closet was still standing even though my whole room was ripped up um so it wasn't like my actual closet it was like a the small closet I was talking about yeah it was still standing which was weird and we found my little sister's bed fully made like roll down the street um it was a really hard day um my little sister um she had this build bear named barons and she wanted it so bad like she wanted to save it and i remember right before we like gave up um one of my family members found it and so there's like a picture of her on my mom's facebook like crying holding barons <laughs> With all my house rubble behind her um and so that was like just it's a lot like as any natural disaster that takes your house would be um but you just take it one day at a time and like it was just me and my family and like what are we gonna do you can't change it so you just have to embrace it. You just have to keep going. You just have to keep moving forward every day. Um, yes, this may have been like the first house like that my mom had actually physically owned as a single mom, but that doesn't mean it was the only house that she was ever going to own. Um, so yeah, it was really, really sad, but we as a family, we just got stronger as a unit and we just, every day just, tried to make ourselves better and tried to move on from the situation um so we did end up living with my grandparents for a little over a month um until we could like find a new house um living with my grandparents was fine wasn't anything crazy you just lived with your grandparents we all just lived in one bedroom though so that was horrible four people in one room um, the outpouring of just giving from everyone in my community <laughs> was crazy. Um, so because the tornado happened on the 20th, we still had, I think, four days left in the school year. They just, like, were like, no one's coming back to school because it was such a major loss in our city. Um... But on, like, the day that was supposed to be our last day of school, they let us have, like, a locker clean-out day where you could come see your teachers, say goodbye, clean out your locker, grab anything that you may have left at the school that day. So I decided to go because I just needed to see my friends. I just needed to see other people besides my family. Um, 
just reconnect with some people, um, share my story about what happened, talk to anybody else if their house got blown away. Um, I couldn't find anyone in my high school that lost their house, but I'm sure there was others. Um, it was a really big tornado and a really major loss for my city. At the end of this video, I'll include a couple pictures of my city and my house. Um, so if you want to stay to the end or skip to the end, the pictures and everything will be there. Um, that day was really hard um, because you just I just kind of went from classroom to classroom, dropped off textbooks, anything like that. If I had any textbooks left, some of them were at my house. Um, and nine out of ten, I mean, not ten teachers, but like most of my teachers, um, were like, is it okay if I pass your information along? Is it okay if so and so contacts you? Um, and so I got a lot of people wanting to help because, like, when you find out, like, a, a family of four could have lost everything, like, we had no clothes, no shoes no nothing like <laughs> nothing nothing um so at my grandparents every single day boxes were showing up of people's clothes that they wanted to donate gift cards and pots and pans and just so much stuff churches were contacting us asking us what they can do um my uncle set up like a gofundme for us um and so we got some money from that, um, which was really nice. Um, so, and my mom was working at Goodwill at the time. She was like a manager there. Um, and they were really nice, like they were nice enough to let me and my sisters come in and just kind of like pick what we wanted um, so that we could have a couple summer outfits to wear, which was really nice. So we got some cute stuff. Um, but it's a lot like when you lose everything it humbles you like it humbles you so hard um, Because you realize how tr like truly blessed you were before and how much you really did have um, And so like when it's gone um, You're just it's just you and you have nothing Tying you to anything else. It's just you you have no possessions um, and so it's very humbling experience to, to go from like, you know, having a, a, a nice house and clothes and to having nothing and living with your grandparents and, and losing everything. Um, so I wouldn't trade the experience for the world. I mean, obviously I would love to go back in time and, you know, still have a house and not have to experience that loss and see how hard it was on my mom and everything like that. But so yeah that's kind of how everything happened we eventually got a new house um everything worked out um we got to go on a huge target shopping spree with our insurance money and some of the donation money um but yeah so that's what it's like to go through a natural disaster and pretty much lose your whole life um but here i am I have a room behind me. I have lots of stuff behind me. Um, you definitely can rebuild. You definitely will be able to move forward. Um, it may be slow at first and it may suck and you may cry a lot. Um, I know me and my family, I think we cried every day for that first week. Um, but things happen every day. Things happen all over and you know, what am I going to do? You know, I'm not going to be able to change it. So you just have to kind of be on the positive side of things. And that's how I tried to be as much as I possibly could. But it's still one of the worst things that's ever happened to me and my family. And to this day, my sisters cannot listen to tornado sirens without crying. So that's a whole other mess in itself. My um, little sister went to counseling for like a whole year because of like, the shock and trauma that she went through so yeah so if you liked the story want to hear any other story times from me comment below um comment below if you've been through anything similar or if you know anyone that's been through anything similar 
it's always nice to have a community of other <laughs> people that have been through things like this. Um, and yours can be bigger, smaller, it doesn't matter. If you've been through something that was traumatic, um, just let me know because it's like it's nice to know that like you're not alone in situations. So yeah, I hope this was a good story. I don't really know. I probably left a whole bunch out. So if you don't like a part two or if you want me to go more in depth into things, let me know because I can definitely go more into depth about my house or the donation process or days leading up to getting a new house or the days after which were some of the hardest days of my life um just let me know so thank you guys for watching i appreciate it so much bye have disappeared under street lights couldn't give a single fuck about those hard times it's just delirium my old friends on shitty drugs in the nightclub while i'm sitting in the dark singing so 